What's up guys? Uh, I'm going to be doing a quick Lightroom tutorial today on, to put it roughly, how to edit like modern Instagram portrait photographers do. Once again, that's a really rough way to say that, but I mean that's what people are probably looking up on YouTube. So yeah, this is for any beginners who are wondering how to edit like that using Lightroom because they're tired of using ViscoCam on their phone or um, anything like that. So we'll go over everything from opening up Lightroom and importing all the way to how to use the tone curve in color photo. So yeah, let's get started. Opening up Lightroom here. Uh, I already made a catalog, so should already open up on that catalog. Yep, so first step, I'm gonna import the photos. I just chose some off my desktop. Yeah, so yeah, these are two simple photos. You can see they kinda just look like anything you'd see on Instagram nowadays. Try to pick the most basic things. So you're gonna click on this develop tab up here and it's gonna open up on the side, your basics, your tone curve, your coloring, your split toning, vignette, sharpening, all these tools. So it seems like a lot at first, but it's really simple to use. It's the best program to edit with. And I'm pretty sure every big you know photographer uses this right now over Photoshop even because of how simple it is to have all your photos down here, throw presets on stuff. So yeah, let's get into it. First thing I do uh, with this photo is I would raise the exposure. If you're trying to really get technical about it, you can look right here at the histogram and it's going to tell you when you have a properly exposed photo. So right here, all of our um, all of our stuff lines up in the middle and that's properly exposed. I'm going to go ahead and eyeball it and I'm fine with it probably right here. And Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to boost all these up. Now, to put it in a simple sense, you've got four tools for editing your exposure, and that's your highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. And the highlights and shadows are different than the whites and blacks, which took me a while to figure out when I was starting. So, to explain it, highlights and shadows are going to be strictly to lighten up one part and darken up another part of a photo. So say I think, hey, you know, the shadows like in her face need to be brought out. If I'm not going to use the masking tool, I'm just going to come right here and brighten that shadow up. But if you're getting really technical, you mess with the whites and blacks to make the photo more aesthetically pleasing or to your style. So why I boost all these, I'll boost these right here, the highlights and shadows so that I can mess with the whites and blacks to compensate, keep my exposure and then add an aesthetic to my photo. So it's a lot of complicated words but basically I'll raise these two and then drop these two and when I drop the blacks you can already see this photo from the start already looks like a really nice photo just editing these highlights shadows whites and blacks um, contrast and clarity I come back at the end to work on just so I can see how my photo has developed and we're gonna go ahead and drop the vibrance all the way to 27. It's making the photo look really dull, but what I like to come and do is come to this um, coloring here. You can probably open it up. You're gonna be like this if you're new to Lightroom. I always recommend going to HSL instead of color because then you have to click on everything. When you have HSL open, you have access to your luminance, your saturation, your hue. So yeah, first things first, her skin is looking super dull. So let's come to the orange and just add some saturation there. And we're already bringing some life back into this photo. The photo might still look a little dull for your taste, but you know, for my type of editing, I think this looks great. Um, adding red just because her lips here need to show up, and if I have the saturation down on that, it's gonna look weird. So yeah, we're gonna keep the the reds a little high. I always unsaturate the greens completely, and the reason for that is yes, they look pretty here, but when I unsaturate them, it almost gives it like a waxy. I can't explain it, but the style of it looks really nice and it just makes the colors like in the flowers and everything else pop because it's in the background and you want your subject and these small details over here like these flowers to pop. So I guess that makes sense from an artistic standpoint. We'll drop the luminance of it too. And uh, let's go ahead and brighten up our subject a tiny bit. And how we're doing that is with the orange on our subject, we're just brightening that up. And we'll unsaturate the yellow really quick. And yeah, mostly when you're going through the colors, you just come through and mess with things until you like how. I'm going to be explaining everything in detail. I always like to bring the blues down so it's almost a lighter blue in hue, and then I like to unsaturate them. And I'm going to unsaturate them this pick just so it kind of almost matches the wall. I want everything to be an almost opaque, dull look. 
because it's winter. So let's add a tiny bit more saturation here. And that's looking really good. Now split toning. Split toning is super important because this is what's going to give you your style as a photographer. I can't tell you what your highlights or shadows should look like and that's all up to you what you want your feed to look like because most photographers will keep their split toning the same on every photo and it kind of, you know, you can edit the rest of the photo but the split toning is what's going to pop out when someone goes on your feed. It's like, oh, this is a Pacific Northwest type feed because it's all moody and oh, this is a happy type feed. I don't know. but. You name it, that, that's that's what you're doing right in here. So I'm gonna take the saturation all the way up and pick a color for my highlights. And I'm gonna choose blue for this one. Let's go right in here, I like that. And now I can bring that saturation down. And you can tell the difference if you just double click and then reverse it. It's very minor, but it's kind of making the photo a little bit blue. And then in the shadows, I'm gonna even it out probably right there in the orange. Yeah, that's what I like. So yeah, we'll, we'll leave it right there and we'll even it out with the shadows. And yeah, it looks about done right there. And now we're gonna to come to the most important part, which is the tone curve. Your tone curve is gonna be your bread and butter when you're editing a photo. So to start, I like to plot three points. And if you're new to this, you can always just click this thing right here and look at your tone curve and see what you're working with. So the left side is going to be your shadows, then your darks, your lights, and your highlights. And it tells you that right down here. It'll pop up whenever you scroll by it. So if you're just studying, trying to figure out what you're doing, you can come here and mess with it and it'll, you know, kind of even everything out. Once you get better at the tone curve, you know, I like to just come in here, plot three points, and then I'll start by adding a little bit of fade to the photo that's raising your shadows and it gives you that kind of faded effect that people have. And then I'll drop the darks a tiny bit. This would be my subject right here in the middle and I'll raise that. Actually, I'm gonna keep that there. And then this is called crushing your highlights. This is a new thing that a lot of Instagrammers have been doing is crushing the highlights and it really will, here, I'll exaggerate it so you can see. It really just kind of adds a faded look on highlights. So I'm not gonna do it that much. It's a little bit too much. That's good for me. I'm gonna come back and raise my exposure a little bit as I've been editing here. I think it's uh, it's a little too much. And then I'm gonna bring my shadows down to compensate. Right there. And I'm just about happy with this photo. I love all the coloring. It's super opaque. I don't think that's the word for it. I'd say more pastel. Uh, all the greens are faded and the yellows are popping in here. And if you ever want to just come through with a brush tool, you can come right on the flowers and make them pop. The reason I'm not going to do that with uh, the coloring tools because then her hair will pop out because that's considered yellow. So just come here and add some clarity and a little saturation. You can do that on the flowers, but that's really specific editing. And uh, last thing I'm going to do is just add a vignette. And yeah, that does it. So you can, cl uh, what is it? So you can click the, the slash key right here and see the before and after. Huge difference. If you feel like it's a little too bright still, which I do, you can come to your highlights and drop those down a bit. Yeah, that's it. That looks really good. So yeah, that's the end of our first photo. And uh, go to this next one. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just brighten the exposure up again. I tend to shoot all of my stuff underexposed and that's just my style of shooting. And I'll come here, add a tiny bit of contrast for now. And I'm going to do the same thing as before, bring everything up and then bring the blacks down. And then I'll bring the shadows down a tiny bit. And there, it might seem like there's no method to it, but you eventually kind of get a feel for what you're messing with in these four areas. Um, it does take a lot of practice though. Same thing, bring the vibrance down. Also, vibrance over saturation. Um, I feel like vibrance treats skin tones better. There's no facts behind that. That's just from my experience in editing. Anyway, so saturation with the oranges. We're gonna bring our skin tones back into the picture. Uh, we're gonna unsaturate the blues. Now you'll see the difference immediately because a lot of the temperature would be in the white. It's a very small difference, but there's a little bit of blue in the white. 
back there. So we're just gonna take those down a little bit and those jeans don't need to be distracting so you can just unsaturate them. And let's bring down the yellow a little bit. Bring up the red. And yeah, I'm kind of liking the coloring already so we're gonna stop it there. Bring that split toning in. Once again, I'm gonna do blue. It's actually a little bit green. You bring a little bit of orange in there to compensate. And now we can hit the tone curve, the three points. And then we're gonna bring up our shadows a tiny bit. And we're gonna crush the darks just a tad, not too much. You know, if you over crush them, it's gonna look like the clarity is just through the roof and the contrast is through the roof. So you just keep it level, like right about here. And then drop the highlights. Alright, and we'll bring our blacks up just a tiny bit, bring our highlights down. I actually feel like that's a little over edited, so I'm going to come back in here and just bring those back up to right there. And then add a small vignette. And we are done. So if you want to add grain to a photo, you can. I choose not to, um, just because I like to keep my photos just looking clean. So looking between these two photos, it's a very similar editing style. Would be very cohesive on a feed, and you know the things that are really going to change are just your tone curve. That's your style right in here. But I mean, if you look at these two photos, they're very similar. It's always going to kind of have that S shape, and that's what most uh, portrait photographers tend to stick with right now. In the coming weeks, I'm going to make a tutorial on how to mess with the red, the green, and the blue. That's just a bit advanced for a beginning tutorial, though. But yeah, go ahead and follow this uh, Hive Creatives YouTube channel. We just started this to start making tutorials for you know beginning photographers, and uh, we have a community in Houston where we host meetups, and you know we allow for creatives to network. It's really cool. You should check out our Instagram page, which will be in the I don't know YouTube very well. The comment section I don't even know what it's called, but we're gonna put all the Instagrams down in there. And yeah, so thanks for watching, guys.